Hello everybody, my name is Kadim, welcome back from the video of Suzerain, we're gonna continue this series, boys. In the last video, we went ahead and talked with Mr. Caronti, which is the, the head of the media, basically. Uh, and uh, we decided to not work with him, because he looked a bit suspicious, a bit sus, boys. He tried to not necessarily bribe us, as well, uh, like the other guy uh, before him. But he did try and incline that the, he was gonna do whatever he wants with the media on my against me if I wasn't on his side. So you know, I said, you know what, that's not gonna work for me. So fuck uh, that, I'm not gonna work with you. So basically, uh, we decided to not work with Mr. Kranti, and now we gotta basically choose who we go for. Like, who are we gonna be friendly uh, as our allies? We've been allied to Agnola for so long. But I feel like Lespia would be the best option. Just economic wise, we need to get our economy back together. It's just only go down. It only goes down and down over and over and over again. We gotta figure something out, right? Figure out a way to fix that. So let's do just that. Briefing on the current diplomatic situation. Blue Mansion uh, Lachavin. So let's see what we got right here. So the Blue Mansion is to death on the diplomacy gathering. The door opened. Oh, so this is the same thing as last time. I guess it didn't save or something. I guess I gotta redo it again. All right, boys. So we're back where we last left off with the dialogue and everything. I made sure to make all the same decisions I did last time. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Uh, we were part of the trade delegation. All right, so we should address our di diplomatic incident. Uh, there we go. Let's see what we got. So Rumberg Consul Sir Bur uh, uh, Brain Arrington announced the closure of the 120 years old consulate. Now the diplomatic staff is leaving the city to go back to Thornburg. Uh, he blamed the lack of security in Sorland to the assassin due to the assassination and subsequent protest. But it is obvious that they are making excuses. Bastards. First they close their consulate and then they blame our security. The security situation is under control. They are playing with us. Their concerns would be genuine, but the rest... No, I'm just gonna say security is under control. They're just playing us right now. Isn't it telling when other countries are working with us, while Rumberg is just cutting more ties with us? Um, the neglect of Mr. Uh, of President Alfonso and the chaos of the elections delayed our diplomatic efforts. Now there are only two Rumberg diplomatic missions left in Sordon. One is the consulate in there, and the other is the assembly in all sorts. We are accustomed to the usual rhetoric, but this is far more serious. I must display strength to my people. Uh, they are bluffing. We're used to it now. Yeah, they're bluffing. Or ju they're just bluffing. They could be. We have beaten them once before, and they might not try again. Uh, this is not the usual bluff. The military has not seen unusual buildup in the regions close to the border. Yeah, Isof Lynchia was furious. He barely kept himself from slamming the desk. They, there are warring developments like the smuggled arms and the buildup near the border. Our military must be buffed up to stand against a regional power like Rumberg. We either respond to their aggressive act with a diplomatic condemnation, or we retaliate by closing our consulate and dome. I want to say that an escalation would be risky this early in our presidency. We should focus on creating a negative image of Rumberg in the international scene. The people of Sorin must be protected no matter the cost. I say we respond equally. That's a rough one, yeah. Do we want international support? You know what? I'm gonna go with Josef right here. We need to actually respond right away. We need to show them that we can defend ourselves no matter what. I don't really care what the other people around me think about that. Uh, I'm just gonna defend myself, alright? so. Write an official diplomatic response. Nope. Retaliate by closing the clo the, the second uh, the Swordland Embassy and Dome. They think they can bully us. They were never so wrong. Let's do it. As you wish, Mr. President. I shall begin work by immediately informing the Ministry of Affa Foreign Affairs and Trade. As a, a strong response to Rumberg will boost popularity at home. Exactly. It will boost my popularity, boys. It will show my population. That I am ready to do anything to defend this goddamn country. And nobody's gonna attack it. I'm glad that we are drawing a clear red line. Otherwise, they will keep, uh, keep escalating the situation. I like the determination. Alright, we should move on to the trade initiative then. Our primary goal will be uh, to successfully sign a trade agreement with one of our smaller neighbors. 
We have two op options with our trade initiative. Start a new negotiations with our old partner Agnola or and forming a new corporation with Wellen. Tell me about the trade deal with Agnola, I guess, first. So first off, the reason behind these option, this option is more diplomatic than economic. Although, of course, we can't forego the added economic value, Agnola is an old ally and a valuable trade partner. The point we are uh, we are at with the early negotiations is around the steel trade. They are demanding that we buy their steel for a higher price. Uh, that is because they think that the deal is far too unbalanced as it is. Their second man, main demand is a privileged access to our agriculture market. If we are to fulfill their demands in return, they are offering a full alliance with Swordland against Rumberg. Well, we already have our allies, boys. I'm already choosing them. Automatically, because we're about to run the side of war right here. We need an ally. If they're, um, if they're guaranteeing their alliance, I'm doing it. So looking at the current advances of Rumberg near our borders, having a coalition against Rumberg would prove extremely useful, exactly. Obviously there were big consequences for entering a full alliance. Mainly the issue is around the Ailey Island. Vaglins uh, has clearly in, uh, clear intentions on taking over the island one way or another. And entering a military alliance with Anola will make them furious. I don't care. Make them furious, I don't care. If they want to attack us? They want to, we, can, we want to have a World War II or something? World War III? I don't care. Let's have it. Alright, bite me, man. I want to stay, uh, state my support for the decision to stick out to the old allies, uh, uh, Anola. Even though I disagree with their demand to relax immigration, we have cooperated with them on many issues in the past. Anola is a solid partner for us. David and the president worked on the previous comprehensive uh, trade agreement in the 30s. Uh, there are obviously subjects that we still need to tackle, like our economies, the traded goods, and what to do with the uh, immigration. My opinion is that it is a good deal and we should go for it. The, day, uh, the new Agnolan Prime Minister is trying to improve the existing relationship. The downside is that we will need to make concessions, a reality of any trade deal. Yeah, that's pretty much true. I would be open to create a new agreement that would be satisf uh, satisfy all sides. Yes, um, I don't want to give any concessions to them. No, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give concessions. Why not? That would be the best outcome. Yeah. If you decide that Anola is a good option, another point is that they have a very democratic system. After the recent elections of the Prime Minister has a mandate to arrange a fairer deal with us. Martin Van Houten has also is an av avid supporter of relaxed immigration. Uh, since we said we will tighten immigration, he might be reluctant. Starting the highway construction in Ireland plays a part too. Uh, regardless, if we are going to increase our regional influence to previous levels, we need to make amends with our neighbors. Ultimately, the decisions will be up to you as always. Well, okay, so what about Welland though? What do they offer me? Dealing with a fractured country like Welland has its positives and negatives. Although we, it will be lucrative in short term, there are risks associated with dealing with such a country. They are proposing co-investments project and a no-tariff agreement. They are also offering oil in return for attracting foreign capital interest from Swordland. However, it is possible that there will be international ramifications of getting closer to a country like Welland. All in all, this is a very lucrative deal for us, however. We need to think about the consequences. I certainly don't support the decisions to become friendlier with the Welland. Uh, we carried their burdens for decades. Their mi migrants flooded our country and now they are expecting uh, a deal from us. Maintaining an influence with Willen could prove useful. Yes, it is risky, but think about our influence on an undeveloped region like that. We could also sell more products and enter their market easily. I am of the opinion that it is plenty too risky. Yes, we would gain resources and immediate capital, but I am afraid of the consequences. So our economy would go up immediately and our budgets as well, but it's too risky, I guess. I think the return is too lucrative to pass and regardless of the risk, you might, you might be right. It's too risky. I tend to agree. If we wish to go forward with the deal, then uh, when the time comes, there is the topic of immigration to consider. Uh, Victor Smolak is a non isolationist. Our promise to tighten our immigration policy would increase the likelihood of the deal. He believes our border need better security. I personally don't like the idea of getting too close to Willen. 
Uh, me too. Agreed. I still think we should give it a try. Peter is the only one who likes it, so I'm gonna... If the majority of the people in my assembly thinks it's not a good idea, I'm not gonna go through with it, boys. I'm just gonna... You know, I'm gonna go with the majority here. Since we did not promise to ally with neither East or nor West, it is rather likely that their concerns will be more around the deal itself. We also need to consider the effects of our economic doctrine plan. The fact that we are headed towards a market economy will me will have an influence. Good negotiators optimize interests, which makes the difference uh, become tri uh, trivial, along both sides to reach a deal. Very true. Uh, we have a lot of time to prepare before the scheduled visits to Wellen and Elnola. I believe that the grief that gives a brief overview of our current options, our trade delegation will begin to work towards the end of the year. We expect a final negotiation and the sign-in to happen next year. I'm very much looking forward to visiting Stalport and uh, Raskalovitz with party animals like David and Simon. Alright, so Peter laughed, I just narrowed his eyes and stared at him. Alright, so well, that concludes our meeting, Mr. Rain. Thank you for, uh, thank you all for coming. I will take my leave then, sir. There we go, the meeting concluded, and they all left. Alright, so we got an option. I am tempted to go with Wellen, just because of the economic situation. Just, same as the whole Lesbia thing, right? I definitely want to go for Lesbia. But I think, like, going for Agnola eventually would be good, because they, uh, they do want to give us... The support, they're willing to give us the support against a future of war against Rumberg. The problem is, is if we ally ourselves with them, we also are going to have a problem with these guys, which are uh, basically want to attack these guys. They want that port right here. So we would basically have a 2v2 situation right here. Uh, it would be rough. We'll see what happens. Report from every Young Swords member claims uh, claim links to the government. Interesting. All right, so yeah. B besides that, I think it's all good. Really, the main problem really is as as well as the economy itself, or the immigration. I think it's the most problem, right? They don't. They want to relax the immigration. We want to actually tighten it. So we'll see what we have to do. In the meantime, let's go back to Oldsworth. Briefing on the results of the reform committee. All right, let's see what we got. I came a little early to the meeting room before anybody showed up. We had scheduled a meeting to discuss the progress of the reform committee regarding the new constitution. I took a seat on the center, uh, center chair in the vacant meeting room as I waited for them to show up. The reforms will, uh, were slowly becoming the most significant expectations of my government. We would be changing Seoul's con uh, constitution of 29. Okay, so this is about the constitution, the new one. Great. Let's do it. Uh, most people nowadays blame the constitution for the outstanding problems of the country. On the other hand, the reformists in the, in the assembly have been lo getting louder about their demands. What I knew for sure was that I needed to do something about this encroaching chaos before it swallowed me. Meanwhile, Sh Lucian, Peter and Naya uh, had been leading the committee to prepare an initial draft for the constitutional amendments. I was intrigued to hear the results. There was a knock on the door, it was Lucian. Good afternoon, sir. Lucian arrived exactly on an hour mark again. Uh, his uh, punctuality could almost be described as obsessive. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Lucian. He took a seat on the table and took, a bun uh, took out a bunch of documents, spreading them on the long table. We should begin the meeting as soon as Mr. Uh, Ms. Morgna and Ms., uh, Mr. Vice President arrives. We finally have some results from the reform committee. How does it look? Uh, good. I'm just gonna say good. A few m minutes later, Peter and I also arrived. After a short chat, everybody sat down and took out their notes. I knew it was going to be a long meeting. There is a lot to talk about the future of this process. Let us being tackle, uh, begin to tackle the, um, the points of the contention. Mr. President, our committee meetings were really fruitful and we already started, we're already started working on their constitutional draft together with the reformists. They demand a little too much, but I've had the success with Franz Richter to create a realistic draft that could potentially go through the Supreme Court. A little, they demanded to rewrite the whole constitution. The requests were just definitely did not outrageous, just not realistic in today's circumstances. 
circumstances. Just because it wouldn't pass the assembly, nonetheless, I'm glad that we are reaching common ground already. If we can reach an agreement with the reformists, we will be very strong in the assembly to be propose the change. Uh, can we uh, reach the two-third majority in the assembly? Is it, well, is it, is it possible to pass the Supreme Court? They are the biggest obstacle. Even if you pass the assembly, the justice, uh, chief of justice will do his best to block our amendments. Uh, we need at least 6 of 11 judges to vote for the proposal, but Mr. Ocker has enormous influence over the judges. We should reach out to the judges in secret. Some of them might be willing to break rank to support us. All, uh, all means are to be considered in order to succeed. They will surely support a just, a just cause for the country and its future. Yeah, I mean, come on now. Let's not be, let's not be stupid. Lucian looks skeptical. According to the Constitution, I am a member of the Supreme Court, which means we already have one vote. Well, that's good to go. Uh, two of the judges are friends of mine, and one uh, and of similar opinion about reforms. Consider them with me. So that's three votes. Already three votes. We need three more, boys. So we only need three votes. Three votes, yes, but I believe that Judge Emmons can be persuaded as well. Uh, she and two other judges, Mr. Dalton and Mr. Merlin. They weren't really blinded by the soulless ideology. Yes, those three don't seem to be working directly with the Chief Justice Ocker. And if we can get to uh, Isabel Edmonds, we might get the six votes needed. That's our best bet. Can we reach out a two? Can we reach a two-thirds majority, though? Uh, if you can get Frank Richter to work with you on this, our only problem would be uniting our own party. We will we'll never be able to get NFP to work with us. We need the majority of our, our 130 seats in the assembly to vote in favor. While the, while the other people need to full support of 70, uh, 70 votes, we will easily surpass the needed 166. Uh, but we, it will be tough to unite the USP with all the devi uh, divisive, uh, divisive wings that are formed. As formed, you must make them follow your lo you loyally. Uh, we did it before the elections. We can do it again. Exactly. It's not e it's not difficult. Albin Cavan and his, and his reformist wings would be supporting you. He already waited in heavily in the committee meetings. However, the conservatives would be a tough break. The influence uh, influence of Seoul is still living strong in the party. We will eventually remove his influence. How many votes do they have? You think they can be persuaded? Well, we will eventually remove his influence. We will need to break the power of the old guard within USP first. Most of the conservatives wing are still loyal to the colonel. Uh, most of their support is necessary to be able to amend the constitution and there is only one person who is key to make them back uh, us. Gloria Tory. She's well respected by the soldiers. She'll be our biggest obstacle in the assembly and our demands will be extensive. I also have a reason to think that she might be in Orso's pocket. She will be tough to break, but we'll need her help to get uh, conservative support. What are the demands exactly? We should run, uh, run down each of the demands of the committee and get your input first. Mr. Moya can explain them further. We'll start uh, with the first red line. The, constitu the new constitution will fix the loopholes regarding the president's absolute veto powers. Even though Mr. Richter put on a whole show about why vetoes should completely be removed, the committee has almost unanimously agreed on fixing the loopholes, thus limiting the presidential vetoes. My suggestion is to add a clause detailing the metas that the assembly may override the veto with some sort of super majority. One, pe per one person should never be able to block the rest. Well, I don't know about that. That's how N uh, NATO works, right? NATO works just like that. One veto blocks everyone else. That's why, that's why Russia always does its thing, boys. Always vetoing everything. It's kind of annoying. I stand in, the, in agreement with Mr. Richter. The vetoes should be removed. The loopholes give the president too much power. Uh, they, will be, they will not be allowed to dictate the negotiations. Well, the vetoes should be removed. Nope. Uh, they will not be allowed to dictate the negotiations. Vetoes are a thing in real life. They should stay a thing. This is one of the starting points of the whole discussion about changing the, the constitution. I don't think this is up to discussion for any reformist. 
The second one is about the judiciary. The new constitution will remove the Supreme Court right to vote on legis legislation. This is yet another point that was unanimously agreed on by all parties. Turkensol established this rule to protect its 29th constitution. We all know most of the judges are still his pawns. Constitutional amendments will still be very difficult to accomplish with a reform like this, particularly because we will keep the two-third votes system to be able to propose a change. However, the judiciary will not have the final say in amendments. This is already what we wanted it to do. Yeah, this is already what we wanted it to do in the first place. So we're good. We're good on that part. Yes, this will ensure that we won't uh, need uh, be another politically motivated Supreme Court. Uh, apart from these two critical points, they have other major demands. They want the reform to appoint. Uh, they want to reform the appointment procedures of the ministers. Mr. Richter clarified that the assembly should have a say in the formation of the Council of Ministers. That is the something that a majority in our party also support. Well, Mr. M Richter also talked about abolishing the member of honor rights of Tolkien's soul that gives him his absolute humanity, immunity and makes him a permanent member of the assembly. Uh, well, that one is a controversial one. I doubt the USP would like that. Immunity of the uh, of the justices, the impeachment of the president, limiting the power of the presidential decrees. All of this came up during the committee meetings. Yes, reformists accept, uh, expect big reforms while our factions in the USP are not very keen on pushing changes that are too great. I'd say keeping everything in the middle ground is a safe bet. No need to agitate anyone too much. I disagree. We'll push for comprehensive reforms. Exactly. We'll push for those. Well, I, I do agree on the fact that the president shouldn't be allowed to have too much power, boys. He should just be there just to be there. You know, he shouldn't have too much power. Let's do that. Let's disagree. I'm with you on this, Mr. President. Well, regardless of what Mr. Rain decides, we will need to work together to push this ad agenda. Now, we have a better picture of your intentions, sir. I will start reaching out to my contacts to make a draft that work for us. I'll present your input to the committee. In a few months, you will have the draft on your uh, desk to make the final changes yourself. I think this was yet another fruitful meeting. Your service is appreciated. There we go. Thank you for your kind words. Count on us. Yes, Mr. President. I think this is where we call it, sir. All right. So they left the room, boys, and the meeting is done. So just had a big meeting about this one. Uh, there's a, a thing happening with the highway situation. Let's take a look. Oh, there's also this right here. Uh, read a report from Vazglin. Urges calm. So the Chancellor has released a statement through official channels using calm, uh, urging calm on the Romberg swordless dispute. The General Secretary has also mentioned that the climbing tensions should immediately be de-escalated de to protect peace and prosperity to the eastern Mekorpa. Yeah, forget about that. There's there's no such thing as uh, as uh, as uh, de-escalating uh, that. It's already happening. Rumber condemns closure? Oh, now they condemn in us. Well, interesting. Now they're condemning us. Okay. Man, these guys are such assholes. They start mobilizing near my border first. And now they're gonna condemn me? Yo, fuck you, dude. These guys are, well, are assholes. H3 construction plans started by Taurus. So they started our uh, construction, boys. Really good. I'm gonna look really quick right here in the journal. So I ordered the sword and consulate in Rumberg to be closed. That's pretty much that. Let's see what we got in all sorts. Meeting with the chief of justice. Uh, presidential room. Let's see what we got. Administration has been working day and night on the overwhelming amount of issues that were facing the country. The departments and sent several documents with, which required my signature so they could start working on the new de uh, decisions that were taken. After I signed dozens of them, I closed my eyes to relax for a moment and had a long day. Even though I, wish, I really wished to, uh, to leave the palace for the day, Lucian had earlier told me that the Chief of Justice wanted to speak to me. We planned to meet in my office in 30 minutes. I waited for him, wondering what subject he would raise. A pour a whiskey? No, just takes a, a time to relax. A thousands of shimmering lights and all sorts of skyline were mesmerizing. Suddenly I heard a knock. All right, it was Lucian. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Lucian. All right, so I'm sorry that I, I couldn't explain the situation to you in the detail. Uh, the Chief of Justice insisted on seeing you this evening. 
I do not know what he has to say, but he will probably be about the new constitution. He will be coming shortly with Judge Mr. Garashi to the meeting. We should take them lightly. All right, let's see what they have to say. I think he's here to test the waters. They're here to train in us to stop the reforms. We may be able to cooperate with them. Regardless of what they uh, they say, I will continue with the, co the constitution. Yeah, they, there's nothing they can say that's going to stop me from doing that. Of course, let's stand our ground and not let them antagonize us, sir. We should. There were three knocks. Lucian checked his watch. He looked rather worried. Livia opened the door. Chief of Justice uh, Orser Acker and the judge entered the room. So there they are, boys. Chief of Justice right there. Good evening, Mr. President. It's great to see you. Welcome, Justice and Chief uh, blah blah blah. Good to see you indeed. Orso gestured as the, at the sofa in the, in the office. May I? Uh, please. Uh, let's have a seat, gentlemen. There we go. We all took our seats and two opposite sofas and made ourselves comfortable. How were your first couple of months, Mr. President? I hope you're faring well. Thank you. It's very bu busy, but I'm doing good. To be honest, I'm uh, having a rough start. Nope. I'm doing well. Not ne no need to worry. Uh, you know, thank you. I'm very busy, but I'm doing all right. It will only get busier. Yet, I think you're not. Uh, you're doing a good job so far, considering all that ha uh, that's happening around us, with the shootings near the palace and soldiers on our borders. He let out a deep sigh. It's a, a troubling time. We appreciate your concerns. You're, you're here to stop the new constitution? No, I actually don't. We know you are working on the new constitution. The Supreme Court does not approve of this. With all due respect, the constitution needs to be updated, sir. I am sure you are well aware of the public demand and our circumstances. If that's so, I see that you are the one who is not aware of our actual circumstances. You want to make a, weather, a weaker constitution in the midst of a problem from both inside and outside. Even if your proposal passes the assembly, I will make sure it will not pass the Supreme Court. That much is clear. Look, asshole. You're going to do whatever I want you to do. All right? Or else you're going to be deposed. That's what's going to happen, Mr. Auker. I'm the president here and you're going to say uh, do what I tell you to do. Damn it. You haven't seen uh, you haven't even seen the proposal yet. Uh, so you came here to train us. Come on, Mr. Auker, we can figure something else. We'll get the court too. Even if you do not cooperate. Good luck with that. Justice of the Supreme Court cannot be bought. Lucian get a, gave a mocking look. I am sure they cannot. Mr. President, you seem to be the only partially informed about the current situation. Please let us explain the reasons of our stance. I believe I am firmly informed about the situation. Oh, please explain. No, let's say here. I don't care about your reasons. Well, I believe I am fully informed about the situations already, my guy. You think you are, Mr. President, but the Chief of Justice has some intel on something that you would be very interested in. And what would that be? Or still signal Aaron with his hands to let him speak instead? Mr. President, I know that you are busy me, a busy man, so I will make this quick. We all know that the Swordish security forces found statues of Rumbergen weaponry in the hideouts of bloodish shepherdists. KA-74s are roaming inside Swordland at this moment. As much as Rumberg poses a direct threat, no, now it is clear that they are also intervening in our country and weaponizing our minorities against us. It is not unprecedented to think that the Bloods will start their terror again with the new toys. Not to mention the fights that broke out between the left and the right wing. After the shooting of Bernard, communists are rising with support of United Contana. The chaos is imminent for Sutherland. And sadly, we don't see the administration taking the necessary precautions. You said you will not focus on military during your term, under the current circumstances that cannot be tolerated at any cost. Mr. Ocker, the court has no jurisdiction uh, over the, these matters. These fucking words, boys. They gotta stop with these words. I swear, I can't read those. We are taking necessary steps. No need to worry. I did promise that, uh, uh, that, but the circumstances have changed. Tolerate? You should be more careful with your words. Mr. Ocker, the court has no jurisdiction. There we go. Aren't we all part of this state, Mr. President? We are all responsible if Sordon fails to overcome these threats. But regardless of that, our 
Are you also aware that the armed British separatists have direct, direct connections with the workers' party of Lodia? Everybody knows that already. You know that what I'm, what that means. Do you remember the vote of the workers' party in the last election? What is, what is this all about? The only reason they are not in the assembly is because of the electoral threshold. They have gotten quite big. They are clearly getting outside help and their connections to the paramilitary bloodish forces cannot be denied. And all of a sudden, the reformists are trying to decrease the electoral threshold so that the bloodish separatists can be legitimized in the assembly to achieve their aims of the independence. You think that Mr. Richter, uh, that's Ms., uh, Mr. Richter's intention? Uh, well, that's too dramatic, but I, I will not allow it to happen, no matter what. Therefore, we need to work together. But if if I wish to only issue, uh, but I wish to only issue, uh, but I wish the only issues were the bloodish terrorists and Rumbert. Reformists suggested uh, suggested changes would also bring the communists, who are backed by United Cantana, into the assembly. Do you see the pattern yet? I apologize, gentlemen, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Exactly, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. This is not a conspiracy theory. Haven't be, haven't you been freezed by a security team? Maybe you should suspect them as well. We should take the necessary measures against communist and bloodish plots, as well as increasing our military budgets against a possible conflict with Rumberg. Look, I'm, I am a communist. What are you talking about? I'm not, like, I don't care about the communist threat. I am a communist. The communists are already in office, my guy. You are blinded. Big, big time. And of course, not fall into the traps of reformers by listening to their demands. They are clearly plotting to, we to weaken the presidents uh, and our whole administration in order to explain the situation. Which brings us to some very important information that we, are, uh, we have. It's definitely something you need to hear and it can change absolutely everything. With all due respect, Mr. President, I think this is getting slightly ridiculous. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's getting way too ridiculous. Uh, let's chief, uh, you're right. I don't, I don't think anything will come out of this meeting. Look, look. Just explain. Explain to me what's happening. The person in question is Mr. Richard himself, the leader of the reformists. We have enough information to infer that he has ties with Arcasia. Arcasia is aggressively growing their influence around the world, and now we have Mr. Richter coming up with the, some of these ridiculous demands for a new constitution amidst the chaos period in Sortland. All these pieces seem to fit perfectly. That is why the Supreme Court will be doing what it takes to stop these reforms and preserve the constitution. How would you know that Mr. Richter has ties to Arcasia? Mr. Galati, we all know he has been in Arcasia many times because he has been documented. But what would you think if he has been making hidden flights to the country? I need to know this, please explain. He was hiding his flights to Arcasia. He has been plotting, uh, spotted in an hotel in Arcasia last year, where they held a conference of, on economic development in volatile regions. Right around that time, he started to influence that mass into believing that our constitution is the reason for everything bad. Strip was not documented nor was he an official guest of the conference. We believe that he had a meeting with President Walker behind closed doors. Also had a couple more photos of him that were taken in Arcasia in different cities. One, of, uh, one is from a couple months back. Again, none of it is documented. He also attended another uh, event in Lesbia last week. The Arcasian Minister of Foreign Affairs was there too. How did you find out about this? This is very suspicious. Many soldiers were already following his leads for quite some time, Mr. President. I cannot give away their identities, but I can give you the evidence. He handed me a small file and contained uh, official documents from the Soviet border guard with highly dated uh, dates that showed no trace of Frinkter's name. There were clear photos of him that were taking the conference in Arcasia, as well as remarks by lesbian and Arcasian citizens who claimed to have seen him with Arcasian businessmen around the same dates. There were also an official transcript, a transcript of one of the speeches where, uh, where he claimed to be in Benfi on the dates of the conference in Arcasia, where he was spotted. Lucian skipped, uh, skimmed through the documents with scepticism, which slowly turned into surprise. There seems to be real. It seems to be real. Of course, they are real, Mr. Galati. 
There seems to be. Uh, these seem to suggest that Arcasia is behind the reformists. Their demands will only benefit Arcasia. They want us to have a weaker administration while we face all these threats. This is clear, uh, clearly uh, a plot against Sorlin. I bet Romberg is part of their plan too. They can, this cannot be a coincidence that they are weaponizing our minorities against us around the same time. Now you understand the reasons of our current stance and also our suspicions about our advisors. Who clearly have not given you the vital information. Lucian gave him a sharp look. We appreciate the information, Mr. Hawker, but I advise against jumping to the conclusions right away. We still need to check the information. There is not much to think or check. This is clear in the emergency. In such case, cases, the Constitution gives the President the right to use his emergency powers. If we work together, we can be sure that the Supreme Court will not block your declaration of emergency. Let's talk about who, uh, how we can work together. You want me to declare an emergency? We cannot wait for the processes of the assembly to take care of these issues. You must exercise your presidential powers for a fast and effective solution. Which means you might need to suspend parts of the constitu constitution to give more authority to our security forces to deal with these issues. We must officially investigate Mr. Richter as well. You can decide, de devise a strong security decree, uh, decree if you can base it on the articles 57 and 58 which gives the president the right to suspend parts of the constitution to deal with national security threats. You can directly bypass the assembly in such a situation. The only thing you need is a Supreme Court to allow the emergency to be declared. And you have a word, our word on that. Sir, I think this is going a bit too far. We shouldn't escalate things so fast. Yeah, me too. Mr. President, why don't we talk in private? Only the two of us. We can, uh, we can devise a plan together. I know how we can use the Constitution to our advantage. It would be more effective if Mr. Galande and Mr. Garassi leave the room before we discuss. So I advise against that. I am not Darth Sidious. I'm not Palpatine. I am not. I've seen that it happen. I, and we've seen it happen in World War II as well. In 1936, 1933. What happened with a certain mustache guy? I'm not going to do it. I am not going to go down that route. It's not gonna happen, all right? I'm going full on democratic slash communist style. I'm not like, I'm gonna give the assembly all the power. I don't want any of the power. So forget about it. Could you leave us alone? I like your idea. I'm sorry to say that we don't, we won't be cooperating, Mr. Ocker. Even though you are aware of our national security threats, you are making a big mistake, Mr. President. We will not allow you to succeed. You are the ones who are making the mistake enough. Gentlemen, I think it's about time to end this meeting. You know what? I'm going to lose my call right here. Let's do it. There was a, so a long silence in the room. It seems the president is done with us, Aaron. Let's take our leave. They stood up. Well, thank you for having us, Mr. President. Have a good evening. They both left the up without saying anything else. That was not good. They clearly tried to threaten you. We need to take care of them. Kill them. Get rid of them. Completely. They want to treat uh, uh, threaten us. I do not abide by these rules. They want to uh, threat us, uh, do a threat to us. We're going to be a threat to them. All right. Let's kill them. Let's get rid of them. Slit their throats. Do something, man. We need to take care of them. Also, we'll be doing whatever it takes to damage you. We need to be careful. There are still many old guard sympathizers in our party. We can't let them divide our party. And he will definitely try. After a short evaluation of the situation on our end, Le Lucian left me, and, uh, left me in the presidential office. It was obvious that the old guards would be main rivals in the near future. We ne really need to deal with them big time, boys. And we're entering, it seems like, uh, the second year or the third year or whatever. Uh, news, let's see. Emergency in Enrica, Mayor announces. We've got Ocker and Maroon Paulist, Radicals, we need democracy. And we've got a uh, geopolitical sort of closest consulate. Well, let's continue really quick though. There we go. We're going to jump on it. Trials of democracy, boys. The constitution is it's going to be the work right here, boys. We got to work on it big time. And there is no way in hell that I'm going to let anyone, especially you old guard, tell me what to do. Yes, I have a bunch of problems, but I can deal with that all of it on my own. So, we're going to leave it right here, boys. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys for the next one. Keep it easy.